Boom boxes were huge back in the 1980s, got smaller in the 1990s, and several years ago, my DIY curiosity had me building one from an old toolbox, even adding a separate subwoofer module later. Today, the hot new trend in DIY boom boxes is the waterproof case designs, and it's fine time to check out one of the most popular amps used in these setups. So let's get the party started. Roll that beautiful beam footage. The Turtle Box speaker has recently taken over the outdoor sports market with its rugged, waterproof design and great sound. But this comes at a cost, which is more than some people want to spend. Now, After the Toolbox build, I did have this idea over 13 years ago using one of these waterproof enclosures and fortunately never completed the project. These days, the waterproof cases are much more affordable and accessible from places like Amazon and Harbor Freight. Also, groups like Built Not Bought Boomboxes on Facebook are an excellent resource. The growing community of over 60,000 members are very helpful, and they also have a YouTube channel with tons of build tips and tricks, and the website offers accessories such as mounting rings or spacers for popular speakers in the mainly Apache cases. Also very helpful are the build sheet list showing the components needed for a sample DIY boombox based on the case you select. I'll leave all their links below if you want to check them out further. Now in the community there are two amps in particular that are the most popular. One is a monoblock, the other is a stereo amplifier. So today we're going to start off with the stereo version called the ZK1002T Stereo Bluetooth Amplifier. Let's unbox it and see what's inside and we'll talk about all the components and what it's all about. First up, you can see the instruction sheet, which gives you all the specs, the ratings, all the features, everything like that. As we dive deeper into the box, we'll see there's a couple more goodies here hiding, including a small Phillips screwdriver here for the breakout connector here for the DC jack that attaches to the amp. We'll show that in a little bit. And in the little baggie, we do have the amplifier. Here it is, the ZK 1002T Hi-Fi Power Amplifier with 100 watts times two and treble and bass regulation, whatever that means. Let's take a closer look here at the amp. Here you can see on the front, we have three knobs. We have treble, we have bass, and we have volume, which also is an on and off switch. That's it for the front. Let's flip it around. We have a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input, which is stereo. We have the speaker outputs, which are screw down terminals, which you set to about 18 gauge bare wire. Also, we have the DC power input, which is a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter barrel style connector. The ZK1002T Bluetooth 5.0 two channel stereo amplifier board has a maximum output of 100 watts per channel. Use the TPA 3116D2 chip. Brings you great hi fi stereo sound quality with two input methods and bass and treble control. You can connect using Bluetooth or 3.5 millimeter cable. Working voltage DC 5 volts to 24 volts. Bluetooth transmission distance is said to be 50 feet. Also, it's compatible with speakers from 4 to 8 ohms. I'll leave links below, but at the time of this video, most of these boards are around $20 for this particular model. There are different brands. Usually the Woozy, W-Z-H-I, are the ones most people want. Mine is Gangazoo. Let's talk about the dimensions. Very compact, 4.24 inches by 2.71 by 0.78 millimeter equivalents are there as well. The chip using these amps is nothing new to me. I've tested several of these years ago in what I call the Chinese Mini Amp Invasion. I'll leave links to all the playlists of those below. But anyway, curiosity killing the cat, we're going to start with some tests here at 12 volts to find out what this amplifier can put out. 4 ohms is rated 20 watts by 2 also disregard the 14.7 volts shown on the dyno. That is a separate power supply for the dyno. Here we go. 12 volts, 4 ohms. What can we get? 13 and 12 watts. There you go. You can see all the display. So let's go ahead and change this up to 21 volts and try the 4 ohm test again. It's rated 50 watts by 2 at 21 volts according to the sheet. Now the test here shows dynamic power, but I actually was running in the certified mode. I will put the correct results at the end when I showed the results. So sorry about that. Did just notice that during the edit. Anyway, let's move on to the two ohm test. 
where it's rated 100 watts by two at 21 volts. Again, tests are at one kilohertz. Certified takes us to 1% distortion. How close to that 100 can we get? There you go, 66 and 63 at 21 volts. Now let's bump that voltage up a little higher to 24. I know a lot of you guys are using 24 volt batteries. And let's find out what we get here. Eight ohms is rated 30 watts by two. And let's find out what we get. Again, one kilohertz is our test track. Certified means up to 1% distortion. And there you go, right at the rating, 30 and 29. So right at 30 watts per channel, very good. Now we're gonna try four ohms. This is where most people I would assume are gonna use it. 24 volts at four ohms rated 70 watts by two. Certified test again takes us to 1% distortion. How close can we get to 70 watts? Here we go. Oh, not quite there. 54 and 52 at 24 volts, one kilohertz. Now what about two ohms? It's not rated at two ohms, two channel at 24 volts, but you know we're gonna do it anyway. So again, still the one kilohertz track. Let's try it out and see what we get here. Can we get 100 by two? No. Close though, 87, 83, so about 85 watts per channel average. Here are all the tests I've done, including the voltages. You'll notice the efficiency there on the far right. It's very low efficiency at 12 volts. Got better at 21. And at 24 volts at four ohms, 85% efficiency. Very good at around 53 watts per channel. Speaking of watts, watts inside. Well, we got to take off a couple of screws, actually four screws here to find out. So let's take out these four Phillips screws. Luckily, the screwdriver they provided will work. Once we do that, we can see some of the internals here of the amplifier. Of course, under that large heat sink in the very center of the amplifier are the TPA3116 chips. There's two of them. And according to the Texas Instruments spec sheet on these, they're rated 50 watts stereo or 100 watts mono. Since there's two of them, they're in the mono configuration. So we'd expect 100 by two. You saw the results of what we got earlier. So there you have it. Now let's talk about Bluetooth and power output and all that fun stuff. No good. If it doesn't sound good, let's find out how does it sound. Instead of using some cheapo car speakers for the demo, I figured I'd use my ELAC bookshelf speakers, which are very high quality, and I was not disappointed with this amp. Next up, I want to give a quick demo of using the bass and treble to find out how it affects the sound quality. Let's find out. I don't know about you guys, but I was super curious to know what frequencies the treble and bass controls on this zk 1002 t amp adjusted. Unfortunately, all the specs online, there's nothing that really tells you. What we're gonna do is using the audio control DMRTA, the software, the little box here, speaker outputs from the amp going into the speaker level inputs of the RTA, and we're gonna play pink noise, and we're gonna to try to estimate what frequencies the bass and treble are adjusting. So I have the bass and treble turned all the way down on the amp, and what you'll notice is probably what you've noticed when you listen to this amp, is that it really kills the highs and lows because it's not like zero to something, it's actually negative when you turn it to a certain point. So real quick, I turned down the volume and turned way up the bass frequency. It looks like possibly around 50 hertz is where the low end is. Let's try the treble while we're here so we can accentuate 
There you go. It looks like between 12 and 16 kilohertz is where it's centered for the treble. So that's a little bit better analysis there. And there's your V curve. Give us the bass, give us the treble, and then we'll smile. You big dummy. Now we're going to talk pros and cons of the ZK1002T. And to be honest, there's not many cons. For the pros, it's inexpensive, around 20 bucks. Input voltage capability, we'll talk about that later. Also, Bluetooth and AUX inputs, dual TPA3116 chips, bass and treble adjustments, has a very compact footprint, and overall great sound quality, especially to be Class D mini amplifier. It pulls very little current, very good overall. As far as things to consider, there's no USB input for using your USB devices. Also, speaker outputs use about 18 gauge or smaller. Also, there's no power supply included, but you guys knew that already. As I'm showing pictures here from the Built Not Bought Boombox's Facebook group, make sure you leave me a comment below. Let me know, have you built one of these? Are you going to build one of these? Should Big D build one of these? What about that other amp, the mono version? You guys want to see that? You got to let me know below because the more you guys like these, the more you watch them, the more it tells me what you want to see. Back to the amp I tested today. Very impressed overall. Sound quality was great. Efficiency was great. And for $20, you really can't beat it. I think you'd have a smile on your face too. I think you guys need to build one of these and let me know how it goes because I'm probably going to do it myself. But wait a minute, we're not done yet. I know you guys want to know, what about this low and high voltage cutoff? First off, we're going to try the low voltage cutoff according to the specs. It says 5 volts. We're going to get to 5. We're actually able to go a little under 5. At 4 volts, it shut off. But we did find out the low voltage cutoff on the amp is 4.5 volts, which is pretty crazy for the range of input capable of this amp. Now for the high voltage cutoff, we were able to get over 29 volts. It's not rated this high. We're actually able to get 29.3. However, the chip is only rated up to 26 volts, so I would not go that high. Thanks as always for watching. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here.